Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Oh, yeah, folks, I am back, 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 back. Took last week week off because of a little uh, technical issue here at the house. But I'm back now, so sorry about missing last week, but I'm sure y'all did fine there without me. Anyway, welcome. This is the Grim Leftovers program right here live on reallibertymedia.com. And uh, it's Monday night, Monday night. August 5, 2019. So, welcome to the show here. This is, I do believe, episode uh, number 33. Nope, nope, 32. Sorry. Episode number 32 uh, of the Grim Leftovers program here. What? Did I do something wrong? I don't know. I'm I'm checking my numbers here. I'm I'm thinking I got a number wrong. It is episode 33. (laughs) <laughs> it's week 32 that's what's going on yeah it's week 32 of uh of this 2019 and it is episode 33 not that any of that really matters but welcome wherever you are wherever you're listening wherever you're tuned in from out there on the rlm radio stream whether you're here on reallibertymedia.com or over on rlmradio.xyz on the direct stream, which you can access via IP address uh, 38.135.36.125 colon 7359 slash listen.pls. Or maybe you're tuned in from Freedoms Network or, or realliberty.org or who knows where you might find us. Internet radio, tune in.com. All these places. We're all these places. And I'm glad to be here with you once again for a lovely, wonderful week of information that is out of date, (laughs) which is what I bring to you here on the Grim Leftover Show, information that's out of date, yeah, so um, (laughs) I would, I would sit here, I know some people want to hear more and more endless, endless more and more about the, the mass shootings over the weekend in El Paso and in Dayton, Ohio, or wait, wait, where, where, where did Trump say it was? Uh, Toledo. <laughs> Holy Toledo. No, no, but it's not going to happen. I'm not going to talk about that. Only other than to say this this one thing as a uh, predictive, uh, more of an analytical view of what's coming down the pike due to those two things, which is the fact that uh, your goobermint will be passing, pushing through some seriously draconian legislation, which is really the point behind the shootings. Oh, you think it was just all random and, and, and even if it were, even if it were, that doesn't matter. Uh, even if these were just random shootings, which, uh, I don't buy. Um, even if they were, they still had this, this legislation written up months, probably years ago, and ready to, to push out at the right moment. And now that they've got people whipped up into a frenzy over these shootings, they can roll out this new legislation and further, further clamp down on you, restrict your rights, remove your rights. They put air quotes around that word, rights, as if you had any rights. If they could take them away from you, they're not rights. They never were. <laughs> so they're going to roll out something with some kind of bizarre uh, name, meaning a- absolute opposite of what it does. Uh, and and this will probably be, be like, I think they've been working on a, uh, what do they call it? Keeping America Safe Act, some kind of shit like that. And, that, and that's probably where that's going to go. Either way, whatever they're going to do, uh, it's going to be bad. And it'll probably push TSA out in further into the public, away from the airports, into your your uh, shopping malls and your schools and your uh, all all kinds of other places. The TSA is going to be out there groping and grabbing and uh, feeling you up, making you feel like a prisoner wherever you are. Uh, of course, you know, gun limitations and regulations and restrictions and saying bye-bye to various guns and uh, ammo and other things like that. This is what's going to happen out of this. 
But but as far as that, the actual events, I don't care. I, I mean, I don't want to talk about those. So we'll just do our normal stuff, our our old news that we do here on Grim Leftovers. And in case any of you are unaware, Grim Leftovers is covering the stories from past weeks that I had lined up for the Freakers Ball Show and never got around to getting to. This one seems, uh, this first story I have for you here, seems particularly appropriate today, although it was released July 9th over on SeekingAlpha.com, because today, if you are watching the stock markets in the U.S. of A., uh, you would have noticed a precipitous drop Minor as that actually was, two to three percent, on the on the various indexes. Uh, either way, seven hundred points, fairly dramatic, I guess. Um, it had been off over nine hundred points at one point, but it ended up like seven hundred twenty points down, or, or just, uh, some kind of nonsense like that. <laughs> either way, uh, unless that continues day after day after day, meh, I'm not interested. Uh, because it, it's it, it, it's so overblown, overinflated at this point in time. Uh, 25,000 on the freaking Dow. You got to be joking. But they're not. A- anyway, so um, uh, this article, Seeking Alpha, posted by Michael A. Gad uh, on this site, July 9th. The always coming but never here recession. Always coming, never here. (laughs) Feels like the dreaded R word has been in people's minds for quite some time. uh, With the way bond yields have behaved, but we never quite get to a recession. Central banks around the world are likely too paranoid to wait and uh, and thus will take action as insurance. Hope maybe misguided, <laughs> you think, because at some point, yields will need to rise for any of this to make any sense. Looking for more? Well, he's got a report here that you can click on in this article and uh, look for more there on uh, that. <sighs> a frustrating environment for economists, eh? Most likely, uh, traditional metrics that would warn of a coming recession don't seem to be working, or at a minimum, are always seemingly always moving in different directions. Stocks are considered a leading indicator. By that metric, the economy is strong, and there is no recession in sight. Bonds are a leading indicator too, of course, yet yield curves around the globe continue to get crushed. And two-year treasury yields in the United States have had a sharp drop. Typically, not a good sign. (laughs) Central banks around the world are likely too paranoid to wait and thus will take action as insurance, as mentioned above, against the economic contraction trying to keep this ongoing age of moderation intact. Kicking the can down the road, if you will. The problem is that other than the stock market responding positively, nothing else on the ground really has. Economic surprises continue to look more and more negative. Yes, they do. Got businesses closing left, right, and center. What's going on here? I can't read this. What's going on? Some little thing that popped up, but I can't. I can't. I can't I can't tell what's going on. I'm trying to read it and this thing popped up. All right. The issues are several fold here. Multiple economic indicators are sending severe warning apps uh, warning signs. The bonds say there's no inflation in sight. Stocks are anticipating the Fed acts, but not anticipating where the Fed will ultimately be effective. I believe this is a core dilemma for why it feels like we are always coming on to a recession, but the recession never gets here because so much of the market is not just a leading indicator of the economy, but also a driver of economic activity, which is not how it's supposed to work. We we may not have an impending recession, 
unless stocks cause it by erasing significant wealth through a meaningful correction or crash. Yeah, see, it's not supposed to, it's not, the economy is not supposed to follow the markets. The markets are supposed to be indicators, reflectors of the economy, of various companies, showing what those companies are actually worth at any point in time through their their, uh, profit margins. And stocks don't work properly anymore. They're not real. Stocks are all manipulated at this point, kind of like gold and silver has been for a long time. Anyway, as this guy noted in uh, this week's lead lag report, uh, near to intermediate term indicators suggest this remains a risk on, risk on, conducive environment with emerging markets, small caps, and cyclical trades likely to benefit. Bearishness remains high and makes total sense, logical sense. But there is room for the reflation trade to momentarily work within the confines of the meaningful meaningful economic weakness and fears of a never-ending, always-coming-on, impending recession. The hope of the, the hope, hope, hopium <laughs> of the Federal Reserve getting ahead of it may mean that we never quite actually reach a recession. That hopium is more than enough to keep bullish sentiment at play in a oversold risk asset, meaning keep on buying this worthless crap. Hope may also be misguided because at some point the yields actually they, they actually need to rise for for this to to, to uh, anyway just 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 no um this is one guy one analyst talking about this particular thing here but the thing is he's right he is freaking right um uh, I, and, and, and if you've been watching the markets for any length of time for a number of years, however long, decades, you saw that back in the 90s, it, there, were, there, were, there was some logic behind it. It made some sense. You could, you could kind of tell where a stock was going to go based upon the things that company was doing. But no more. That doesn't exist now. It, it's, it's, it's all like fairy tales and unicorns and rainbows I, I don't know what the hell you want to call it but it, it's nonsense um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it just so happens back you know when I started around around the time I started uh, getting into and then quickly getting out of the markets I was noticing this trend becoming stronger and stronger uh, not, not, and, and it's you know I don't know if it's all the high frequency trading or it's just so much manipulation going on it's, but you, you can't really look at at a, at a company's sheet and 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 see where where they should go. It's all emotion uh, at consumer level, but it's all manipulation at the upper levels where the money's really at. Someone posted a link uh, in the uh, chat room here and. Real Liberty Media yesterday, I think it was. Might have been Rome's. I forget who. Anyway, um, showing showing that the S&P 500, 80% of the S&P 500 is owned by six individuals. Individuals slash corporations. But as we all know, at this point, corporations are people, so... <laughs> Oh, I, I never got around to saying hi to the folks over here in the chat. So let me do that now. Um, over here in the chat on reallibertymedia.com or if you come on to IRC, irc.freenode.net and click on in to pound pound Real Liberty Media, you'll see all these people in here talking about various things and talking about this show, talking about whatever. But they're here. And and it's a great group of folks that are always here. We got the bar man. He's my bot. One of my bots. And we got Beetle and myself and the Mighty Moose Girl, Mr. DC, Anti and Asmo and Jealous and Dodie and Free Enslaved, Miss Graham Z and the Java Doctor, uh, Meester Meister Brow, Ponder Ender, 
Uh, we got Miss Kate and Mr. Rob Works and Rose. The Vanna Whitebot. Vinny, the other half of Ponder Gander. They're kind of hooked, connected at the hip, I guess. Uh, we got the Weather North Bot that tells you the weather. In case you might want to know how hot it is or going to be outside your house. We got Mr. Woodman. And uh, the Phantom and Cyborg. Noodle, where'd my cursor go? Uh, so, <laughs> you ever have too many screens and you lose your cursor? Anyway, um, <laughs> where are we at here? Rob Works and Rome's and uh, Woodman and Phantom and Cyborg Noodle and Dan, 10 EC. Out of Dan. We got 10 and Siv and Frumpy, the Gromit Man, uh, JJ's, uh, Kiss, Prince, Pwn Sauce, the Sock Puppet, Smart Ass, and the lovely Miss Van Meter here in the list of names on Real Liberty Media Chat. Come on over, jump on in, say howdy and howdy. All right, on to the next story. This posted on Reuters.com back on July 8th. Are you a fan, by the way? Let me let me ask you. Hi, G. Yes, hi, G. That's uh, it's like 12, 12 Gs. I don't know how many Gs. <laughs> 12 Gs, I think, is pretty deadly. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, are you a fan of the private prisons? The, pri- the prison industrial complex? Well, one of the companies that has been financing these private prisons for a long time are done. They're finished. At least they're, they're done with the private prison sector. SunTrust is the name of that company, and they say no more. SunTrust Banks Incorporated will stop financing operators of private prisons and immigrant holding fil- facilities, it said of, on Monday of that week, becoming the latest lender to distance itself from a sector associated with Trump and his administration's policies. The decision was made after an extensive consideration of the views of our stakeholders on this deeply complex issue. You know, personally, I I, I don't care. I don't care. Um, What the reason is they stop funding these private prisons? As long as they stop funding these private prisons. Private prisons are, are are a horrible, horrible idea. You in in the way that they're being done now, in a in a realistic, in a anarcho capitalist world, you probably wouldn't have a need for any prisons. But if they did, if you did, they would be private. But in in this system where it's all state rules, state they call them laws, uh, and and private prisons it, it, it's just bad. It's just bad. Uh, anyway, so SunTrust is one of several banks that have underwritten bonds or syndicated loans for at least one of the major private U.S. prison operators, Core Civic and GeoCorp Incorporated. Uh, um, by the way, Core Civic they they were running a prison here in uh, the county that I live in um, until last year or year before. Uh, yeah, they 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 just they went out of business there because there weren't enough criminals. <laughs> anyway, in twenty eighteen, lenders including Bank of America and Wells Fargo uh, raised roughly one point eight billion in three deals for Core Civic, uh, according to some data placed there. Uh, banks have been under pressure to cut ties with the private industry, private prison industry since uh, Trump's restrictions on immigration raised concerns about detention center conditions. Uh, The center accounts for about two-thirds of the people held by the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE S&P Global Ratings estimated last year. Earlier this year, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Bank of America made similar commitments to phase-out relationships with the private prison companies. Again, whatever it takes to get rid of them. Whatever it takes. Executives of the big banks have been confronted by activists at annual shareholder meetings and grilled by lawmakers about their role in the industry. Private prison operators have argued that activists mischaracterize the nature of their facilities. 
but do they really? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you guys are horrible. Oh, man. Anyways, you can check out. There's, there's more to the article, but uh, you got the gist of what's going on there with those. Um, anything it takes, whatever it takes to close down the freaking uh, private prisons is a bonus, is a plus, is a move in the right direction. Uh, you want to blame it on Trump? Go ahead. You want to blame it on me? I'll take it. I don't care. Uh, it, it, it close them private prisons. Of course, you know, blaming it on me is kind of would be kind of useless since I have no no <laughs> influence over such things that you might be caring about. <laughs> oh boy! And I don't want to have that influence either. By the way, let me just make John. Uh, let, let me just say that. All right, from what's up with that dot com, posted on July 9th by a guest essayist, Larry Hamlin here. L.A. Times sea level rise anti science climate alarmist propaganda campaign. Whew, that's a mouthful. Sea level rise anti science climate alarmist propaganda campaign. Wow. <laughs> The Los Angeles Times' latest anti-science sea level rise propaganda campaign articles claims are totally devoid of any actual scientific data addressing the record of actual California coastal measurements of sea level rise outcomes which remain unchanging at steady rates of about 3 to 9 inches per century with no acceleration uh, impacts present. Now, some of you may have heard, I don't know how many of you may have heard, but there there is a little town there in San Diego County, northern San Diego County, uh, along the coastline, uh, and the town is called Encinitas. And, and I used to pass through there every single day, twice a day, uh, on the way to and from places that I were, was employed at. Anyway, in Encinitas, they've got these really cool beaches uh, that are down at the bottom of these cliffs. And there's these stairways to go down there, and there's places you can hang out down on the beach at the bottom of the cliffs, or about a good, you know, 20, 30 yards from from the at at low tide from the cliff to the actual coastline uh, where the where the water hits the sand there. Um, and I I've, I've been up and down those stairs many a times. Anyway, a, a portion of the uh, cliff uh, collapsed on this during this last weekend, and three people died. Now, I haven't heard any calls for uh, uh, banning cliff sides, but um, that's a whole other story. Anyway, so uh, the, now, and I saw some stories about this, that they're trying to say that these cliffs, that this particular cliff collapsed due to climate change, which is nonsense. There's always, every ever since those cliffs have been there, since I was born, which is... 58 odd years ago um, there's been warning signs on those cliffs saying don't hang out directly under the cliff don't do it it's not safe there <laughs> but but ignore all that because climate change no uh, anyway so I yeah I've been wrapping down those stairs many times it's a, it's a really cool it is a really cool beach I don't want to say it was it still is um, even though it's located in California, uh, it, it, it's still a great place. But, as this article is pointing out, uh, this warning, this dire information about climate change causing sea level rise is absolute nonsense. Because if the ocean actually rose three inches, that beach wouldn't even be there. It'd be underwater all the time. And the water on that beach and the sea level rise doesn't get up to those cliffs, which are maybe 100 feet going up. I don't know. how I, I never measured it. But it's, it's, it's a pretty good little, you know, nice. they got a nice set of stairs there for you to walk down. Anyway, actual NOAA measured California coastal sea level rise data through the year 2018 is shown for the state's coastal sites uh, having between 70 and 120 years of recorded data. 
and there are some charts and graphs right here for you to peruse. The latest Times Propaganda article notes the following as the basis for its exaggerated, pff, made up, just call it, don't even bother, it's not exaggerated, it's total nonsense, uh, coastal sea level rise claims. But lines in the sand are meant to shift. In the last hundred years, the sea rose less than nine inches in California. Yeah, much less. Uh, by the end of this century, the surge could be greater than nine feet. Based on what? Nonsense. This ridiculous and, uh, and data unsupported assertion was addressed in a prior to this uh, What's Up With That article with the following graphic provided uh, showing the absurdity of the Times computer model driven coastal sea level rise uh, climate alarmist type. And it's the hockey stick <laughs> going up against the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, <laughs> the big lie, climate alarmist propaganda, propagandist focused time articles relies on nothing but speculation, absolute speculation and conjecture based upon computer models. Computer models, may I add, that they don't have in here, with fake data. You could punch any numbers you want into your computer models to get the answer you're looking for. It's really simple. Which have proven 30 year long track record of a flawed and failed, highly exaggerated coastal sea level rise errors as it was also addressed in a prior What's Up With That article. Climate alarmists and their media shills desperately try to ignore and conceal this totally flawed prior three decades of failure in completely blowing projections of coastal sea level rise outcomes. These failed alarmists then proceed to simply move the goalposts yet again and make the same flawed computer model uh, claims for the next 30 years. Oh, it was it uh, the Babylon Bee put out a, a, a comedy piece, a satire piece last week talking about the, uh, I, I think it was uh, Ocrazio that said that, uh, that everybody's going to die within 12 years uh, because of climate change. And so, so they put out a, a, a comedy satire piece about the fact that uh, if 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 people don't don't start being uh, doing everything the climate alarmists say they need to do within the next twelve years, we're going to have to make new projections again for another twelve years. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, it's all it's all it's all um, well. The Times a scientifically unsupported and flawed computer model. Ugh. The Times have become nothing more than a purely politically driven pop propaganda publication, which provides no objectivity whatsoever in its climate articles, but instead is lost in a scientifically unsupported, make-believe, climate alarmist world, devoid, totally devoid of connection to scientific reality, especially regarding the use of actual data versus the time's continual use of flawed and exaggerated manufactured computer model speculation and conjecture. The latest Los Angeles Times article is based is basically an expansion of and repeat of an article published back on March 13th of this year. Uh, by the same reporter, and, and for whatever reason, they allow these guys to go ahead and just print this stuff, and they get away with it. And I, I understand why, because out there in California, it's um, it's it's regarded as something good, something they love to see. Sorry, I didn't get a drink. Uh, uh, facts be damned. Facts be damned. Facts only get in the way of the agenda. You can't have, you can't push your agenda if your agenda doesn't line up with reality unless you make stuff up. And that's what they do. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I could just do a whole show. I could do show after show about the, the climate alarmist nonsense. But, you know, it gets a little old after a while because 
I talk about it on whatever I talk, you know, weekly or semi-weekly or bi-weekly basis. And, and uh, at least once or twice, you know, I'll bring up some kind of garbage they're spewing. And, but it, it, it's just so pervasive. It's just out there. And the, the problem is most people believe it. Most people think it's true. I mean, it's everywhere. This information is all over the place. And so the freaking mullet heads out there that just listen to what whatever is coming out of their side, what they believe is their side. People they think are trying to save the planet uh, when, of course, that's not what they're trying to do. And because there's nothing wrong with the planet in the first place to save. I mean, certainly we want people to not be wasteful and abusive of the planet. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants to live in a clean planet. Everybody wants to to live in a, a natural environment as best as possible, which, of course, most of these people that are complaining about this stuff live in the dirtiest parts of the dirtiest cities, and they stay there, and they gather there, and more of them flock there, and, and they won't leave there, and they look around themselves and see filth and guck and human garbage and, and and so I think it's a little more understandable than somebody living out here in the sticks um, that would say yeah ain't that bad guys really not that bad I mean maybe where you are it's bad but who said you had to live there <laughs> you had to live there and, and complain about big corporations on your iPad or iPhone or whatever <laughs> using all your big corporation websites and dr drinking your big corporation coffee uh, yeah the the ones in and following these leaders that go around doing the, the worst possible things to the environment while while speaking boldly against it all right <laughs> let's go on here to the next story Oh, man, this is posted on uh, fanaticalfuturist.com on the 12th of June. Fanatical Futurist. World's first autonomous robot completes its journey inside the human body. Why this matters, in brief. As healthcare and robotics merge... The robo-surgeon to nanobots, we need to find new ways to help them navigate to where they're needed. Interested in the future and want to experience more? Surgeons have used robots operated by joysticks for more. All right. And Rob Works states here, you don't need to be a climate alarmist and again, to be against pop, 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 pollution. <laughs> Absolutely right. And who is the uh, number one polluter on the planet? Hint, he says, we, I'm, I'm thinking he means somebody other than we, gave them a trillion dollars. <laughs> I think he means the U.S. of A, not we as in you and I. Unless you're part of them somehow. <laughs> uh, I am not part of we. <laughs> Anyway, um, surgeons have used robots operated by joysticks for more than a decade now. With recent advances, well, but if, they're, if they are operated by joysticks, are they really robots? Anyway, uh, with recent advances in autonomous uh, dentist, general, and neurosurgical robots, and even in 5G, letting them use those same foundational robot technologies to perform remote surgeries on patients in buildings that for now are tens of miles away from the actual surgeon. And recently, and perhaps even more impressively and sci-fi sounding, teams in China managed to steer swarms of surgical nanobots through mazes of simulated blood vessels, creepy, using nothing more than magnetism. All that said, though, Pierre Dupont, Ph.D., and Chief Pediatric Cardiac, Cardiac Bioengineering at Boston Children's Hospital, says that to his knowledge, his team is the first in the world to have created an autonomous surgical robot 
that's capable of navigating itself without any human help. See, there's a robot. To uh, a desired destination inside the human body. In much the same way that self-driving car finds its own way on destination. Hopefully, better than a self-driving car because I haven't seen a whole lot of good about them. Anyway, DuPont, who authored the paper on their work, and envisions autonomous robots like these assisting surgeons in complex operations, reducing fatigue and freeing surgeons to focus on more difficult maneuvers, which in turn will help improve patient outcomes. The right way to think about this is through the analogy of a fighter pilot and a fighter plane. Let's hope it doesn't have the payloads that the fighter plane carries. Uh, the fighter plane takes on routine tasks like flying the plane, so the pilot can focus on the higher level tasks of the mission. In the latest example of robotic wizardry, uh, the team's robotic catheter navigated itself through a patient's body using an optical touch sensor developed by DuPont's lab that was informed by a map of the cardiac anatomy of, and preoperative scans. The touch sensor uses artificial intelligence and image processing algorithms to enable the catheter to figure out where it is in the heart and where it needs to go. For the demo, the team performed a highly technical, demanding procedure known as paravalvular aortic leak closure, which repairs replacement heart valves that have begun leaking around the edges. Once the robot, oh, why don't you just put new, better, non-leaking valves in there? Anyway, once the robotic catheter reached the leak location, and an experienced cardiac surgeon then took control and inserted a plug to close the leak. Uh, in repeated trials, the robotic catheter successfully navigated the heart valve uh, leaks in roughly the same amount of time as the surgeon, who was using other, either either a traditional hand tool or a joystick-controlled robot. It sounds cool. And, you know, the thing I, w I would like to see, and I saw in... I think the movie was called Jason X. I'm pretty sure Jason X was the movie. <laughs> Which you may be familiar with other Friday the 13th movies starring Jason Voorhees. Uh, but in that movie, um, they had... The, they they just like would pour a a, a load of uh, nanobots on on you, and those nanobots would crawl into your body, fix up everything that was wrong with you, and then crawl back out, leaving a few in there as kind of like sensors, monitors, uh, to to know, you know, if anything was to go wrong, it could alert, make it you know do an alert, and, and then they could you know give you more of those, or those nanobots could re replicate themselves. Um, yeah, kind of like the uh, uh, replicators in, in uh, Stargate SG-1. Um, <laughs> only for a good purpose. <laughs> Not to kill everything. <laughs> anyway, I like the idea. It sounds cool. Um, it, it says I would say I'd prefer the robot going uh, inside of me to an actual human doing it. <laughs> Cherry 2000 is a whole different deal, man. Um, all right. So, I'll say this before I get to this next article here, uh, as a lead-in to this next article. Because around the U.S. of A. and other parts of the world, marijuana is being uh, legalized, they call it, or decriminalized, which is a little less good than legalized. Um, but at no place is it being deregulated. And the U.S. federal government has done nothing about any of it, except for the hemp. They, 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 did, they did deregulate hemp, which is awesome. Uh, but again, that's hemp. That's not marijuana. That's not cannabis. Whatever you want to call it. Ganja. Reefer. Weed. <laughs> anyway, so they have not and they will not as long as this, what's happening in this next article continues. 
And here we go from Forbes.com, posted on July 3rd, 2019. World Drug Report reveals United Nations is still not supporting cannabis legalization, even under progressive leadership. Now, I don't know what progressive or conservative has to do with marijuana legalization. How is it, how is it a partisan issue? That people should be allowed to have some freedom, and wouldn't aren't aren't the aren't the conservatives supposed to be more about freedom? So wouldn't they be more driven? Conservatives, shouldn't you be more driven to get the hell off of people's asses about weed and other things they want to do that affect nobody other than themselves? All right. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> The United Nations Office of Drugs Drugs and Crime, which is the only reason the drugs are a crime is because you said they were. They weren't a crime prior to that. Anyway, it released its 2019 World Drug Report last week, calling for public health-based drug policies. This paradigm shift from the law enforcement-driven approach seen in previous years looks more humane on the surface. But is it really? Is it? An attempt to better understand where the UN stands concerning cannabis, this article features exclusive insights from various experts who agreed to dissect the report for further clarity. Is the United Nations cannabis friendly? While hundreds of journalists around the globe have been reporting that the UN supports cannabis legalization or at least decriminalization, These claims are pretty much unsubstantiated. The confusion probably derived from the World Health Organization recommending a rescheduling of cannabis and several of its key components under international drug treaties. But under the current leadership of the UN Office of Drugs and Crime, the world body is only advocating for alternatives to incarceration in the form of drug courts. And this approach is still not comprehensive or transformative enough, says Heather Hayes, uh, chair of the New York NGO Committee on Drugs. Sounds like quite the job. Hayes argues that instead of supporting life-saving harm reduction, the UN has been focusing most of its efforts on treatment and prevention. Having said this, she recommends the current progressive uh, I hate that word by the way Um, I mean not as a word for its actual pure wordage but for the usage that it's got in these days anyway Secretary General Antonio Guterres for convening a UN coordination task team that has written a report titled what we have learned in the last 10 years a summary of knowledge acquired by acquired and produced by the United Nations system on drug-related matters. Drug-related. The approach highlighted in this document clearly contrasts with the UN ODC's dominant model as it focuses on public health and human rights, putting people at the center of it all. About the report, the uh, UN's 2019 World Drug Report highlights a few trends, including an uptick, an uptick, an uptick, an uptick, an uptick? Is that what they meant to say? In the production of cocaine, a boom in synthetic opioid markets, and a subsequent increase in overdose fatalities. Uh, the fifth booklet, focused on cannabis and hallucinogens, takes a deep dive into the market's transition and transition amid changes in legal status in some countries. It is important to notice that much of the data in the report reflects drug use for less than half of the participating UN member states as the reporting of such information is voluntary. Think of it this way. It's highly unlikely that any member state is going to step forward and claim the title of drug-dealing kingpin of the world. Uh, So the data is likely incomplete. (laughs) That sounds like a great title. Yep, we're it, man. We're the king. We the king. 
uh, but to understand the findings and validity of the World Drug Report with neutrality, one must take into account that member states that choose not to participate, it's very much like them, uh, the, the UN, to present only part of the picture. <sighs> you know, I, I think it's safe to say, that just to, to stop at this point and uh, give you the link to the article here, because it goes on for quite a ways, um, that the United, the United States not only doesn't have an interest in, in going legal on marijuana or deregulating marijuana, undescheduling marijuana completely, um, but they can't. They're not allowed to, uh, as they are, they are bound by, by what the United Nations has to say, as are all the rest of the countries in the world. They're all bound by, by, by the United Nations rules. They could violate them, but they're not going to. So if you're hoping for uh, some kind of federal easing on these things, um, you're not going to get them. Free and slave to say decriminalize shrooms. He wants to buy them in a local grocery store. Um, the thing is, uh, decriminalize is really no good. You can't buy something at a grocery store that's decriminalized. It would have to be legalized at a minimum. Uh, decriminalization just means that you won't go to jail for having them, but you will still have them stolen from you and you will still have a fine placed against you. Uh, decriminalization, regardless of what some people believe it to be, is not that. It's, it's not good. It's not, a, it's not a good way to go, but it's better than criminalization, of course. It's better than them throwing you in a, in a hole somewhere. This way they just steal your property and steal your money. <laughs> so, so, so apparently that's better. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how I ran across this article, but here it is. Yeah, I'm old. Did I mention that? I'm old. <laughs> the... The the, uh, the the website is called agingmatters.com. Aging matters. <laughs> oh, and this is something we've all known, at least all the folks here, well, most of the folks here in the Real Liberty Media chat for, for quite a period of time because we've talked about all these, these issues. But here it is in black and white print on the interwebs. Uh, I don't see a date on this. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The truth is the truth and it doesn't end. Science reveals that curcumin removes fluoride from the brain. Yes, it detoxifies you of heavy metals. Curcumin is awesome stuff and you can get it in various forms. Fluoride is a mineral found in our water supply in varying amounts, depending on where you live. The mineral is often mentioned in dental health, which is said, uh, falsely so, to prevent or reduce tooth decay. No, fluoride actually causes tooth decay. It causes something called fluoridosis, which attacks the enamel on your teeth. Fluoride was never proven to be a good thing for your dental health. They just started telling you Hey, the dentists say this is good for your teeth. And then the dentist started saying, Hey, they told us we say this, so we must say this. No. Fluoride is not good for you in any way. Although not everyone believes that fluoride is safe. Yes, it's not even close. But rather very capable of damaging the brain. Yes, that too. Scientists from Harvard and the published studies have brought up some interesting points which could lead to some potential red flags. Curcumin has been found to reduce the effects of the neurotoxicity induced by fluoride. That's right, fluoride is a neurotoxin. In case you're unaware of that, look it up! The information's out there, it's a poison. Other benefits include fighting the formation of damaging free radicals, immunity boosting, and reduced swelling and inflammation. The study by researchers from the University College of Science 
Mbel Sukahara University, spent almost a decade investigating the ways in which fluoride induces neurodegenerative changes, makes you dumb. That's what that means, makes you dumb. Neurodegenerative makes you dumb. <laughs> changes in the brains of mammals. Oh man, they focused for the most part on the hippocampus and cerebral cortex in order to assess the neurotoxic effects and prove curcumin as a protectant, at least on some level. Uh, these researchers randomly divided up mice into four different groups for 30 days. The groups being control, no fluoride, fluoride 120 parts per million, fluoride 120 parts per million, and uh, over three millimeter uh, kilo, kilogram body weight, um, and uh, curcumin 30 milligram body weight. So they, they just kind of separate. They, here's a dose, here's a dose, here's a heavier dose, here's a heavier dose, and here's no dose. As expected, the fluoride-only treatment group showed elevated MDA levels as opposed to the non-fluoride-treated control. The fluoride within the curcumin group uh, saw reduced MDA levels when compared to the fluoride-only group. This is demonstrating the protective effects one can obtain attain from curcumin. And they got links here to the full studies on this. But bear in mind um, that, yeah, it, curcumin's good stuff. And um, I suggest you, you get some, whether it be in supplement form or, or spice form, whatever it takes to get the stuff into your body on a regular basis. Um, I, I, I highly recommend it. All right. <coughs> Speaking of things we all know, <laughs> from TechCrunch.com, posted a month ago, Amazon resp responds to the United States Senator's inquiry, confirms Alexa voice records are kept indefinitely, like forever, like forever, maybe longer. Amazon has responded to a letter of inquiry it received from U.S. Senator Chris Coons that asks the company to detail what happens to customers' Alexa voice records and data after they speak to their virtual assistant. You don't even have to be speaking to it. You just have to be speaking. And if you have one of the ones that's got a camera, well... Anyway, the, the Senator's letter was prompted by a CNET investigation in May which found that Amazon keeps voice records unless... Users, users manually delete them. And that it may keep text transcripts of those vo voice recordings forever. In Amazon's response, uh, published on Senator Kuhn's website, the company confirmed CNET's findings, explaining that it does, in fact, store user voice recordings up until the point they choose to manually delete them. Of course, most never knowing they're even there, uh, why would they bother trying to delete them, delete something that they don't even know exists? In other words, the recordings are never automatically deleted at any point. However, the original CNET report uh, claimed that text transcripts of the voice records were still maintained on Amazon servers even after users deleted their recordings with no option for the user to delete them. Uh, as CNET explained... Uh, where they explain, Amazon would delete the text log from Alexa's main system, but not the remaining subsystems. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, in Amazon's report to the Senator's inquiry, the company detailed what exactly it stores and what it does not. Uh, it clarified that transcripts themselves are deleted when a customer chooses to delete a voice record using the Alexa Privacy Hub dashboard. But like CNET had claimed the transcripts are deleted from Alexa's primary storage systems, Amazon's not really so much clear about that and where else they may reside, saying only that there's an ongoing effort to ensure the transcripts are safe and protected. <laughs> um, I I'm just going to say this about all that. Um... Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't use those things. Don't get off them. Get off them damn 
spy devices. <laughs> what the hell? Well, I meant to do this article earlier. Oh, well, we get to it now. We're here now. We don't have much time, but we're getting to it now. Um, Americans are not falling for the fake news about dietary supplements or the use of vitamin or as the use of vitamin supplements continues to grow. The poll finds that 86% of Americans take vitamins or supplements, yet only 21% have confirmed a nutritional deficiency. Americans spend billions on herbs that don't work, according to Healthline. This is, these, these, this is uh, uh, what do you call it, propaganda nonsense they're putting here. They're saying that 86% take vitamins, only 21% have a, a nutritional deficiency. I guarantee you. 98% of the people out there have a nutritional deficiency of some kind. Well, they say a confirmed nutritional deficiency, whatever the hell that means. And they say they spend you're spending billions on the vitamins and herbs that don't work when they absolutely do work. And then they another propaganda piece says that vitamins and supplements can't replace a balanced diet. Well, that's true. But the food that you're that you've got in the grocery stores don't really provide you a balanced diet, now does it? Because it's all bruh. Anyway, <laughs> from the Guardian, it says, "Save your money. No evidence brain brain health supplements work." Yeah, uh, dietary supplements don't reduce mortality. Uh, do uh, why are they so against supplements? That that's what I want to know. Okay, I understand that you want people not to believe in supplements, but why? Why? Why don't you? What's the problem? I I don't I don't see it. Um, so anyway, according to the poll sponsored for the, uh, by the Council for New Responsible Nutrition, um, 75% of U.S. adults take dietary supplements, up from 65% in 2009. So yeah, Americans are mindless consumers of dietary supplements, or they really don't believe the anti-dietary supplement propaganda. And that's what it comes down to, is we don't believe your nonsense. You've lied to us continually forever and so your nonsense anyway there's a, good, a lot of good information and data there in that article on lourockwell.com um so check it out and that article was posted july 3rd so lourockwell.com july 3rd uh scan through the 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 stuff the nonsense coming out of the clap the uh, corporate lame-ass propaganda and uh understand that yeah if you're taking supplements and they're working for you keep doing it all right, I'm going to just give you the headlines on these next two. I'm not going to bother with them. Uh, but I, I found them humorous, um, sad, humorous, interesting, whatever. The first one on the mindunleashed.com, uh, posted on July 8th here. Thousands of fish die, which is not, it's not humorous, after whiskey fire turns Kentucky River alcoholic. That part I find humorous. <laughs> Nude photo of Alexa. Well, thanks for that, Rob Works. Um, <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> and finally, um, like I said, it's going to give you the, uh, the headline here pretty much because, um, hell, John McAfee could have done this on day one. What's the big deal? But uh, Cellbrite, it's a company that makes various uh, technical, technical devices, is the same company which helped the FBI unlock the iPhone device of the San Bernardino shooter, now claims its new tool unlocks almost any iOS or Android device. Yeah, they can do that. So anyway, there's that. All right, I am out of uh, time uh, for these articles. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in here today on Grim Leftovers on this Monday, August 5th, 2019. I'll be back next Monday, hopefully. <laughs> that was another edition. Um, and uh, tonight, six hours from now, you get Flash somebody with his show in a perfect world. So check him out right here on RLM Radio. Um, Grammy will be here Wednesday at her normal time and Friday. 7 p.m. Eastern with Grammy's Rocket Chow. Check that out. Look at the schedule on RealLibertyMedia.com for all the other shows on RLM Radio. Have yourselves a great week.
Talk to y'all later. Thanks so much. Peace!